All right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Everyone looks up like, oh. <laughs> Hola, awesome. how's it going? No warning. We just jump right into it. I yeah. know. I was, I was just like, <laughs> oh, oh, we're doing <laughs> this. <laughs> okay. Hey. How's Surprise. It going? All right. Well, welcome to uh, Comics Covered. Uh, so we thought we'd bring on a few more people to enliven our conversation a bit more. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, X-Men 97. I know everyone has been watching that. And if you haven't, if you haven't, then look at the bottom of your screen. Spoilers. Uh, we are going to be talking about the episode and also the comic books that are kind of relevant to the episode and all that stuff. Ooh. Um, so, yeah. So, we'll go from there. But, uh, Matt, do you want to say anything? Or why don't we introduce uh, everybody on the panel? Yeah, uh, I'm Matt Cover Price. Uh, we're going to go through, uh, like I said, we're just, I mean, X Men 97 um, is fascinating on multiple. Not only is it a great show and it's causing a lot of ripples through the, the superhero universe, but we can jump into what does that mean for uh, comics? What does it mean for the aftermarket? What, what changes are we already seeing? Um, and we'll dive into that. And so, uh, I'm glad to have uh, both Bobby at Cover Price, who is our editor, um, who who manages all our content. We have Phil, who is the one true nerd king. <laughs> if you're wondering who the fake nerd king is, I guess that's all of us. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, what what is your followers up to? Oh, only 113,000 now. Oh, now it's you're doing that. Now you're making me feel very braggadocious. When <laughs> <laughs> I usually I try to be more subtle. Hey, so. we we remember when you know. Yeah, were, I know. I zoom in on the, uh, the I, big numbers. <laughs> I had I had like I had 300 followers, and I started emailing John. Hi, you don't know me, but I want to start making stuff with your content. And he was just like, I I don't know you, and can't pay you so i'm like no it's okay i don't care <laughs> so, i think i said get off my lawn <laughs> pretty much it was just like oh, i don't know you and i'm not paying you so i i don't really know what you're doing but um right, right. yeah yeah well, yeah way back when and if there's anyone else who have who has asked to do stuff with our content you're free to but yeah it's just <laughs> let us you know let, let, let us know <laughs> yeah, go go for it. Um, we get, but people reach out, and I'm like, I forget to respond to people or can't get to everyone. So you know, yeah, I just stopped asking permission and just kind of went with the whole. No, I mean, it's fun like, by the way, I'm doing this, yeah. and I hope you're okay with it. That's one way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's that's the whole thing. If there's something that you like and you want to explore something further, like you know, run with it. There, there's yeah. everything that we do is is intended to have to be conversation starters. You know. Um, and like five years later, page. look, I finally made it on a show. Five yeah, years later, I finally got on a damn show. This is well, a, five, that's five all years makes... later, we're finally doing a show. So. <laughs> that's, that's more appropriate, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably more accurate. You know. mm, 100%. And, and what about you, Bobby? What makes you an uh, X Men expert? Uh, <laughs> you wait, show? right, right when people are drinking, Judd. I, he, I didn't know he was gonna <laughs> drink. I've <laughs> uh, been collecting for. 30 years and pretty much X-Men has been the one title where <clears throat> I've I've only I only dropped off when um oh who Claremont jumped on back on in like 2003 oh you're talking actual comics oh yeah yeah, yeah. well that's what I meant <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Yeah. that is um but then uh that was a Tom Rainey who was writing X-Men for a while um mm. I think he wrote for a bit. That's when they went like the whole like anime way, and they got really weird. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, been with the X for a while. Uh, uh, um, what is it? A child of the atom. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I am. A, I am literally a child of the atom. Cyclops. <laughs> Cyclops, 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 Cyclops always. I noticed uh, Brian saying, asking what a comic is. Well, you're on the wrong channel, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to see Con and, and Con uh, Cyclops is finally getting a little bit of respect. You know, he mm -hmm. was always pretty much a badass until the X-Men cartoon on Fox Kids with Gambit and Wolverine always giving him the sauce every single week. He just kind of got punked. But then all of a sudden, you know, as far as the generation goes, they finally caught up with at least the first episode, all of a sudden, it's like that's a new Cyclops. That's that's right. a Cyclops I can work with. That and so. the action movies really just trashed Cyclops, especially the Brian Singer 
like that initial trilogy is like ah well he was he was a plot point you know like he was he was there to be the damsel in distress uh yeah. you know uh it, it, it is and what what i like about um I mean, are we jumping right into X Men '97? We're we just doing it. Hey, I'm, I found I found some stuff on. Uh, we'll, we'll watch the clip. We could talk about it. But uh, so yeah, oh, that yeah. whole scene was insane. I know you're talking about where he's using his. Well, first he's using his optic blast to uh, to dash. Defensively, to, it's concussive. Finally, yeah. yeah, they finally showed him as concussive. That was amazing. Well, it was funny to watch like um, some of the reaction videos and some of you know some novice X Men folks. Or wondering why his beams weren't cutting through things, right? So you know, it's kind of fun to, you know, actually have people learn a little bit about the character, um, you know, because all of us have loved him in the comics, and a lot of things like, I don't know if they'll ever get into it, but his he has like a secondary mutation, right? Which is the ability to kind of always think, like the the, the ability to think like five steps ahead. Yeah, strategy. Yeah, is, the, was that the, a secondary the, mutation, or was that just him? Being... No, they said it was a secondary mutation. It was just something so low level that it wasn't something that was like showy, like an optic blast. You know? Interesting. All right, yeah. I found it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh... see you on the ground. Yeah, this run. Right. Now you know as, like as, he, they did, did kind of op the X Men a little bit with the series this, this season. I gotta say, like I don't remember them ever getting away with this. For few reasons, well, for few reasons Fox people were like, "This is so manga, right?" You know, because yeah. would it destroy? Would it give him whiplash? You know, would I, it like throw, blow his head off? His other mutation must be his neck muscles because it would just be snap. And that yeah. would be the end of Cyclops. Well, Absolutely. I would assume he's used to like you know blasting things and having to control it, yeah, so but, there must be something. Yeah, but so, if, you're, if you're using it to dash across a room and use it to propel yourself, if someone grabbed your head and yanked you, you you die. And, yeah. and you gotta have some nice slippery shoes too, mm -hmm. right? If you have shoes with good traction, it'd just be like you know, it. it's a whole thing. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Yeah. The, well, that floor must have been like just waxed, you know? right? <laughs> Everybody's sliding. <laughs> well, the great, on. the great thing about '97 is the fact that like, I was talking to a buddy of mine about right before this dropped, um, how the original series kind of nerfed the X Men. Like Cyclops was kind of depowered, Storm was depowered, um, like every, like it was more focused on like Wolverine. Jean Grey couldn't do anything without fainting and sounding like she was, you know. A certain film actress uh and now storms omega level like cyclops is a badass gene gray is holding up a lake because like finally finally yeah. i i got i got chills the moment they go a level omega level mutant detected and it was just like when whoa his eyes all turn like that program yeah. turns on, and then I killed him <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> no but they did that when storm when storms yeah. like uh when they sent storm oh, right yeah right. yeah right. Storm, the forecast um, yeah, give him the four path storm. The fact that storm <laughs> has a theme song, yeah, is so good. Like that piano is so like that. We saw it this past week. Uh, we heard it again. I should say we didn't. We didn't, we didn't see the music. We heard the music. Yes. Yeah. I, I I did like. I don't know if any of you were thinking during that scene where she's flying around, where she like gets her powers and she starts flying around. Um, I'm like, does she just like is she four just still dying in the cave while she's like doing her fly around? <laughs> yeah. I actually was thinking that. I was like, that's that's a dick move. Right, right. I, 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 I have to say this last episode was probably my least favorite of the ones so far. But it was I I because I thought of that too. I'm like, we finally got goddess storm. And mm. like she's just she just like left forge in the dust. You know, I I know she's got some mixed emotions in everything there, but she seemed to be totally back on his side, and then all of a sudden it's just like, nope, nope, uh, he's gone. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if they will introduce. Uh, I mean, they're definitely building a love story between them, but I wonder if they would introduce T'Challa because I mean, I know it's happened so later in the comics, but so maybe because a trailer did show Captain America Shield. Yeah. Supposed oh. oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. So we might get the Avengers. Well, well, I've heard I've heard it might be like a time travel thing where they're gonna bring everybody back, basically. You know what well, I mean? Well, yeah, cable they, cable was that the MacGuffin. 
it, it, it is confirmed that Storm will make a what if appearance in what if season three. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we were talking we were talking to um Trent. at uh at what is it a WonderCon. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Frank was oh. there. Stephen Frank is the writer of Silver. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Uh, awesome. But book. he's he's a notable um, animation technical director. Um, he's done. He worked on the Iron Giant. He's worked on both seasons of What If. Um, and so you know, we were talking to him about how much we love the What If series, and we were asking him about like, you know, we're really excited about Marvel Zombies. He's like, I can't talk about it. He's like, but it's better than anything. <laughs> like, it's it's so good. Like, like, and, and watching this, the fact that they're going so hard in what I thought was just going to be a kid's cartoon, you know, yeah. an extension of, um, I can't imagine. It just gives me a lot of um, excitement for Marvel Zombies. And just, like, if, if Peter eats Mary Jane and starts crying after it, like, I will be <laughs> absolutely happy. Um, that they're they're going that deep, um, and then we're going to see Magneto as a hero again if they do go into that original story where Magneto is saving the day, yeah. you know, um, which is kind of interesting. Like to really focus, uh, you know, we don't get to see Magneto the villain anymore. Which, I mean, he's a classic. Kind of are though for lately with villains in the MCU, like they all have to have like a sympathetic background, and right. I don't know. I don't think it gets more sympathetic than than Magneto, though. Yeah, like, exactly. You, know, you understand his motivation <laughs> more than yeah. anyone, you know. Yeah, but you you didn't know it at first. It was something that they right. made. Like when the X Men first came out, Magneto was just the bad guy. We we didn't right. know he was you know a Holocaust survivor. Or like then all of a sudden, it was just like, well, you know, now we're gonna do some stuff with it. But that's like you know that was at that was that was added into the recipe. He was just right. a bad dude for a long time, and right. you know, so for me in my mind, I do kind of miss bad guys being bad guys. So that's why I'm kind of glad like, Mr. Sinister's still lurking. Like you see yes. him, like oh oh oh, is it like like when they tried to make him good, like in the the most recent X Men runs kind of thing? I'm just like I can't do that. Like I, I can't like just stop just. Just stop making the bad guys good for like a minute and let them yeah. be bad and just keep them bad. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I just want to follow. I, like, I, I, I even think Kingpin's a little too whiny for me. Like, you know, he's a little too sensitive. Just too a sensitive. little too sensitive. Do you guys know the uh, the power stack on Sinister? Like what his powers actually are? Like I was I was watching this whole thing on him. He um he started off just as a as a not even a mutant. Uh, apocalypse changes him into a kind of a mutant. Then yes. he starts adapting and taking everybody's. He took Proudstar, you know, uh, I think his name is Proudstar. The yeah. Like, yeah, his like super like the strength of like five people, speed. He took all that, put it into himself. Then he took um, a healing factor from who did he take? I, I think he actually cloned like got something from Mystique, so that's why he can change shape. He can do everything. He's a yeah. telepath. He can change shape. He can. I think he can teleport even. Like it's it's nuts. He's he's way op. So and, and you can't be a good guy with the name Mister Sinister. Even <laughs> like you know how they like try to change the bad guys to like good guys. Like Juggernaut was on the team. He got his, like, he What's that? I would say he got his name Sinister because it's the last word his wife said to him when she died, carrying their baby. Basically, she, he said because he was more obsessed. No, no. He, yeah, he she was more obsessed with like re bringing back their lost son, and as she died. She was like, you're so sinister. And so he goes, okay, I shall be. <laughs> well, I like the fact, I like the fact that like, yeah, they didn't make him good, but they kind of redconned that and that he was being good. Yeah. Betraying everyone while that was all happening. And honestly, like, I don't know if you'll ever watch Lucifer, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I have, I have that voice in my head when I read sinister, just this like suave British man. Who's just an absolute a-hole. <laughs> yeah. I can see that and he'd be a great in the fan cast for it 100 percent too. I, I I know they were they wanted to use John Hamm in the past, and I still see him as he would have been good. He had that kind of jawline and that that kind of look if you give him an entire white makeup and a nice little crystal on the top of his forehead. But at any rate, um, I you know, from the Mad Men days when he was a real D-bag before he kind of started doing the comedy all the time. But I uh 
I, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested in the, oh, hey, and see, looks my rogue. Um, <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's yeah. my sinister casting. Heroes and villains. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad Sinister's in this season yeah. to kind of give us the bad guy that I need after seeing Magneto come back. Because I do know Magneto's a both sides of the fence thing. And I do know Magneto has a very sympathetic background and I, and I get it. Yeah. Um, I've just, I, I think one of my favorite Marvel shows was Loki. And, you know, yeah. I never liked Loki before that, but obviously they made me fall in love with him. Whoops. And I'm not saying I don't want to fall in love with Magneto. He's one of my favorite villains, but I like him really as a villain. I don't want to, I, 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 I just need him as a bad guy, you know? So I don't was, know. Was his whole origin, like that whole like uh, Holocaust origin story, was that in the comics or did that come out because of X-Men? The first yeah, one? it was. It was, comics. Uh, it was in the comics? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 The, the, the helmet was from the, 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 cartoon the movies the helmet like repelling uh yeah that, was the that wasn't the, that wasn't from the comics that was that was the movie yeah but yeah that um the, that little tidbit uh, one no, thing that, uh, there we go oh. mm. <laughs> yeah that's that's the one yeah see you know it we should just do this moving forward there we go we'll just do the whole show now in this for the rest of the way <laughs> And for well, everybody who doesn't have one, one, you're left out. <laughs> it's very <laughs> echoey in here. This is the only helmet that makes my big ass head feel small, too. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I feel like every single time I put it on, it's like, oh, this doesn't fit at all. Well, because if you were the master of magnetism, you could adjust it to your head, but you right? you're not. It's you like know. having it tailored, tailor made, right. basically. I right. have I nice. have a huge head, man. So this is when right. I put oh, this yeah. thing on the first time. That's I'm what she like, said. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, we can only be young once, we can be immature forever. So, you know. Um, I remember when I got it, I was just like, thank God I got that on sale because this thing's so big. I feel like I'm rattling around in it. <laughs> One yeah. thing I, we should call out is, um, first, we are going to be doing a giveaway today as well. Okay. And the cool thing is we are giving away a three comic set. Matt, do you want to talk about it? Yeah. So, I mean, we've we've had the uh, Red Coat's first appearance and some of the Geiger books um, have been trending. Um, because they just came out with the whole shared universe, which you can see right here. These are the 1 in 50 foils for each of these books. Um, and it makes a very shiny um, connecting set, um, which is awesome. Uh, we've uh, we've also been seeing, like, we did a three-year reflective, so you want to see uh, our write-up on where these books were three years ago. It's kind of fascinating to go back. Like, these were on our top 10 three years ago, and it just so happens to be well-timed with being on our top 10 now, but three years ago was trending because there was rumors of content, right? And so that was what was moving it. And now three years later, it's moving because people are just excited about this new shared universe. Um, so it's, you know, what's, what's been a fun trend lately is to see a lot of com uh, comics move because of just fanfare. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and we'll get into a little more. Like, I want to go back to the site done in a little bit and show the front site, of, just show the top 10, the runners, and then also what's going in the movers. Um, it's, it's really interesting to see and, and, and what's also in the hot books. You can see the, the what's happening already due to the X-Men 97 and people enjoying it. And it's kind of like, you know, we'll, we'll dive into a little bit more. But there's definitely... Um, I I really do feel that if if Marvel leans into this the right way, um, and they pay attention to what's going on with this show, they they could have something pretty special, you know. Mm -hmm. No, and I, I know everyone uses words like return to form and Marvel's back, and you know, Marvel's back. They've returned to form. <laughs> right. I, I I I you know every it's. I, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna fall on deaf ears with that, but I do agree. Those books were really cool, Matt. I love those yeah. covers. Um, just echoing what Steve Bradley and and Chaz SSJ say, fancy yeah. cool covers, hundred percent, very dope. Um, yeah. I've never seen that set, so that's a really cool giveaway, man. Really yeah. cool giveaway. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're all one in fifty. So I mean, I think right now they go for thirty or forty, but I think they're awesome. You know, really yeah. good uh, sets to hold on to as people. Like I think like this universe is really interesting, and the massive verse that like a lot of people aren't paying attention to the massive verse as closely as they should, which is the um, radiant black. Yeah, radiant black I think is yeah. the the linchpin in my mind. This yeah. is cool, but radiant black is my favorite one. Radiant black. I mean, I I do like that. You know, what's cool is that these non Marvel DC books are able to launch a shared universe, and people are there for it. You know. Um, so I, I, I do have a lot of excitement for just what, uh, what's happening in both content and what's happening in comics. And I, um, and I do want to point out too, uh, you, you don't get to have a shared universe if you're still an indie comic. It is a big three image is a part of the big three for, for they are, they are part of the big three, but they're individual publishers you yeah. know so like it is their own thing yeah but they're they're I, I i i love image i have i have so many uh, invincible i've mm -hmm. i love image image is honestly what really got me into comics yes jim lee's x-men is what and brought my teenage self into it but it was yeah. all of the gen 13s the wild cats the all of that stuff which really got me 100 percent rolling in comics always yeah. image I'm, yeah. I'm a big image lover but i am as an indie guy though too a lot of people are just like oh you know i was out picking up indies and i grabbed all these different image books i'm like um image is I, not really the indie that it used to be anymore yeah, right. like you know it's like image well, I, is a powerhouse image i guess when spawn sells a million copies you know it wasn't a it wasn't an indie book uh, in 1992 anymore <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it um, broke ground. It broke the way. It paved the way for a lot of other indie publishers. But I just, um, as as a as a pretty hardcore indie guy nowadays, um, I yeah. I always just like every single time I hear it, I'm just like I'm going to be the controversial person when I say this. Yeah. But yeah, no, uh, I, I I think that's fair. That's definitely fair. I mean, my first book was um, my first superhero comic. Um, God bless him was uh, Rob Liefeld's uh, Young Blood. Young Blood uh, was a great book, though. Yeah. I yeah. mean, well, all of them were great. I mean, like, you know, I so yeah. my, the first book I ever p purchased at aftermarket prices was Spawn 1. My joke is it took um, 20 years for it to reclaim its value uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I bought it for 20 well, oh. in 1992, which is a oh, lot. Wow. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I had pure FOMO back then as a kid, you know, where I was like, <laughs> I'm like this spawn number one. They said that's gonna send my kids to college. I'm gonna go, you know. Yeah, it's not the draw, price tag on used it. Used to draw spawn. I remember you used to have a bunch of pictures and, and you you made me a picture for my well, birthday one year or something. Not to knock uh, Todd, but he made uh, <laughs> spawn is a is a very easily like a drawable character, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. you know, when you look at his mask, you're, you're Spider-Man eyes and a black mask, right? Yeah, and, it's just and, essentially and, eyes that yeah. are always yeah. Yeah. angled and crazy with a couple little dots right. here and there for right. eyebrow furrowing and anger you know that was it for yeah. a headshot for a headshot it's a good head it's an easy headshot to yeah to yeah. approach um but everything else you know all you need is actually just a, a giant cape yeah you know, and then and then you're good um so no he's he's a fun character to when you're getting into drawing it's it's a fun character to jump into because of those elements that make it a little bit easier to, you know, you're not, or or you could do a uh, young blood and you never have to draw feet, right? We could, mm. we <laughs> have a little, yeah, can we have a little hit on uh, Rob? Dun, let's not get into a Twitter war right now here, yeah. okay? No, man? No, no, we'll, leave, we'll leave Rob alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where I don't, it wouldn't, no, PTSD. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I think I, I young blood was there. I remember shadow Hawk was a big thing. Death blow, you know, I, I, all those, all those old image titles were really what kind of got me through the day. I, I think, yeah. and, I, and I loved, um, I loved harbinger as well with valiant. Um, I remember, sure. I remember harbinger versus predator and it was supposed to be like the hottest thing since sliced bread because we we're going to see a future predator. You know, it's going to be like a predator. predator. We knew it was going to be a future predator. <laughs> so, you know, God, that was crazy times. Kind of. Did you guys see that uh, Wolverine versus Predator line uh, series or what kind of well, limited series? Uh, Avengers? 
Well, Avengers versus Aliens is coming out oh, next. Yeah. Hickman's running yeah. that, and I'm kind of a, I'm very much excited about that because I'm a yeah. big Aliens fan. But the Wolverine versus Predator was fun. Mm -hmm. It was definitely fun for me. I enjoyed it. I, I picked it up. But man, Avengers versus Aliens, and so we're going to get Aliens with some Avenger-like powers for the ones that they're able to get is oh, going to be kind man. of fucking cool. I'm is not going to lie. I'm just like. Oh, is that how it works with the xenomorph? Like they, I know they take on the shape of whatever they bond with. Exactly. They so and they would have like rhino ones or whatever that, but in this case, the adaptation is going to give some power sets of the humans because the aliens make it to earth. They are on earth. They're infecting people. Are they getting powers from different mutants or low level street thug, you know, whatever it may be, but the aliens are going to get to not just take their physical form, but some of their power sets as well. So it's going to get, it's going to be, I think it could be cool. I'm kind of, ex I'm, I'm low key. I'm trying to keep myself calm, but cool. Marvel did a good job with the alien franchise when they brought it over. I was very pleased. I, I was a big dark horse fan, but I felt like it kind of got a little bit too dark and boring on the dark, dark horse side of things. I, I mm. felt like it just got a little repetitive. Um, and I think Marvel bred a lot of good life, good life back into it, breathed, mm. excuse me, bred, um, yeah. <laughs> breathed a lot of good life into it. And I'm, I'm excited about the Marvel versus the aliens versus Avengers. I'm going yeah. to have fun with that. Do we know when that's happening? It was just announced. Um, I've got, I, I put a cover, the cover of it in my stories, um, the other day. I, let me take a look. I'll find out when it's releasing real quick, but yeah, I that, believe that it's like be May, really June. Cool. Um, oh. while you're doing that, why don't we? Uh, so, can, 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 we, John, can you do you mind jumping back into the site? Uh, I just want to talk about a few things before we get into sure, sure. Well, this is I'm in I'm on the page with the uh, oh. the article you yeah. guys wrote, yeah. Well, we did so we did a top 10 keys going into the show based on what we knew about the show, yeah. A lot of this has now changed because. Like, John, if you go back, I mean, if you want to watch this, it's kind of fun. We actually have the Gambit Remember It clip. If you, That was one of my favorite clips <laughs> from the original show, so I'm, gra I'm so happy that it was tied into episode five in, yeah. such, a, in such a poetic way. Um, yeah, but, John, and we'll, we'll go into that in a little bit, too. But, John, if you jump back into, like, a lot of this is now, I feel like we got to update this now because you'll see <laughs> live on the site. Like, if you go into right there on the runner-up list, um, you can see a lot of books. So in the, the top ten, we have a first appearance of Gambit. Yep. We have a classic Rogue Gambit cover. We have uh, Gambit's true first appearance um, and X-Pen Annual. You're going to get we, a uh, people, Matt. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I mean, so his, his appearance and his death on the show – Cause like it's so interesting. Like people aren't like off the gambit train. They only got on the gambit train, and then you saw these other books moving. Like there was okay, Sinister Air was moving in the runner up list. Um, that episode tied directly into E for Extinction, Grant yep. Morrison's run, mm -hmm. which is right there with one fourteen. Yep. Um, so that's now back on. Which was, that was trending a month ago because it was confirmed that she was going to be in Deadpool three, and now it's trending again just for the overall story arc. And, and and then if you go into the movers, John, um, it, you can even see like more X Men books trending that are connected to. Um, I mean, just look at the top line there. I don't even know what that X Men book is. The top the top left. What's the key in there? Oh, that's First Bastion. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, there was talk that he was the big bad. Well, people thought that it, it. So they revealed that you know they revealed the true big bad at the end of episode six, but it doesn't mean that Bastion might not appear you know yeah um, anything could happen at this point but that was pure speculation that that was going to happen in that one um i mean i that gambit road cover is one of my all-time favorite covers of oh all yeah time. um even prior to the show because i always loved there's certain rela relationships you've always loved in comics is like mary jane and, and peter yep. gambit and rogue you know i know mr fantastic and sea storm's relationship was always a little rocky but you know uh, same with Gene Gray and Scott Summers, um, but those were the relationships we knew. That was Rocky because they just needed it for the right, the right, right. Yeah. Rocky. But you, know. you have the Tri Sentinel. His the tri first appearance of the Tri Sentinel already moving. X Men Avengers is moving. 
I mean, now people are picking up Wolverine books more than they were. I mean, look, I, I mean, everything. This is just X Men ninety seven. Yeah, like yeah. just met, like when we get a full a full reveal of when DC goes right into their their um their full slate and they reveal their stuff as you move on and then you jump into Marvel's they haven't announced any update to their slate in two years right Phil um, yeah so it's been like the second they reveal all the new plans and and like here's when the X Men's gonna pop up it's like. I don't think we'll not see an X Men book on the top ten ever again. Um, so it's going to be like now is the time to get into X Men books. Are we past the time, or is it now the time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, scroll down. We also have the first appearance of Lalandra at the bottom. I think that's oh no, not Lalandra, her uh, Deathbird. Yeah, if you, if you scroll down a little bit more, um, coming in with that Milky Way ghetto, oh, right there, bit. right. <laughs> so the two wow. to the right of that penthouse, Sosa Mica there. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, so that's the first appearance of Deathbird, and then what's the book trending to the right of that? That is, um, another cameo of Bastion, yeah, oh, for, a first cameo appearance of Bastion. Yeah. Then the other one at the bottom above was the first full, thing. yeah. Um, and then it keeps going down a little bit, yeah, because yeah, uh, episode six actually used a direct line from uh, the E, from, e is for Extinction issue. Oh, yeah, what well, was what was that line? Uh, at the end, when Xavier spoilers, uh, when Xavier gets the the wave of the deaths, and like they were drinking, making love, like that line, I was actually shocked they put that in the cartoon uh, because I'm like, oh, like people have like obviously people have sex, so they have a baby, but you know, <laughs> yeah, they did, and like, that works. Daddy was thought, making love, like well. The, the thing that I liked in episode six is Xavier was kind of funny. He was like, yeah. "You're being so dramatic." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was intentional or if it was just, you know, maybe I, I wasn't sure if it was silly writing or if it was just Xavier being a little goofy. Uh, a little bit. Like, oh, he's a, he's a goofball, that guy. But yeah, you never. Oh, so what? So this is the book that's really interesting to me. It was a blink and you'll miss it kind of appearance of Vulcan, but was uh, yeah. appeared in episode six. Yeah. So. That was as you know, yeah, he was he was on the spaceship with uh, what are they called? The Guardians? Uh, was the, no, Imperial Guard. Imperial um, Guard. Yeah, yeah. So he was amongst the Imperial Guard. So if you know in that that Deadly Genesis line, that storyline, so that he he um, they were the original X. They were the original mutants that Charles trained, and mm -hmm. then he sent them into battle. They all got killed, and then except for Vulcan, who got picked up by the Shi'ar. And then raised them. He kind of grew up there. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of in the middle of that story, um, which is what. So they're obviously going to come back to that. And um, he's technically, and, technically, he is the king of the Shi'ar now. Really? Is he marries Deathbird? Yeah. After after yeah. killing oh, right. the kin, he right. kills the kin, becomes leader, and marries Deathbird. Right. That's pretty cool. I always like that the Summers brothers um, have the, the they can't hurt each other. They yeah. can just you know they can blast each other all day long. And they I, I love that. that. I love that whole like what's going on? Like it's not working. Like they didn't get it for the first yeah. like few episodes. Yeah, um, but if you read Deadly Genesis, it's fantastic. I mean, it really that was a really good storyline. And so the fact that um, uh, and his Vulcan's first appearance is another complicated one. Like it, it, he's technically his first appearance is in that first issue, but he's in shadows the whole time, clearly speaking. But he doesn't get like named until I think the fourth issue. Um, and you don't see his, you do see his face reveal on, on the cover of issue two. And then, and then he's, his face is revealed in issue three. But issue four is when they get your, you get his origin, he's named, yeah. and you get his full, his full look. Um, so it's complex. It's his first is a little, a little muddy, um, but the market is definitely going with Deadly Genesis, and it's got some great covers to it. So yeah, she, yeah. Uh, she keeps like that part of the episode where he's in the classroom. That was, and, I that was my favorite part too. But the one thing I didn't like was it was like Xavier was like, "Oh yeah, I am a telepath." <laughs> I <laughs> forgot. Oh my god! <laughs> I used my fast 
Telekinetic that's right. abilities. That's right. Oh, well, that's right. I, mean, <laughs> oh, I have powers. <laughs> yeah, it always cool. kind of it always kind of irked me. Xavier always kind of irked me in the X Men cartoon because it was just like convenient, like you know, oh hey, well you know, like I, I don't know, it it was conveniently for remembering. Oh God, I'm a telepath. You know, I <laughs> right. like the one of the most the most powerful on earth. I can do something here. You <laughs> know, and it was just like ah. But it's worth noting. Episode five and episode six were different writers, you know? Yeah. So you can definitely feel the different aesthetic and the tone and the and and yeah. the style was was way you can tell that in episode five there they just he just found his groove and did what he wanted. Like he didn't do what he wanted, but he just did all the things he's probably thought about for his whole life, right? Uh, uh, that mm. he wished the accident could do. Episode six was definitely someone trying to mimic the original old tone series of the, yeah. of, the, of, the, of the old show. Yeah, and, 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 and I and he didn't stay in the same, you know, like it, it didn't mirror what happened in episode five. So that that's kind of interesting to see the different um, styles in yeah. each episode. So, so yeah. oh, sorry, oh, I was gonna say, like for me, I. For me, episode six felt like Xavier was trying to be very respectful. It's like when you like when you're dating someone, you want to be like very respectful of like your your partner's like you know like family and everything. And at the end, like, you know what? No, here's why I'm like, here's why I'm so good, right? And so uh, for me, that was Xavier just going, all right. <sighs> all right. So so James Crater picks up a, has a really great point. So. Uh, I mean, I forget. Let's, who was the um, X Men '97 writer that was? Yeah. Was, was, it it was his OnlyFans page. He's a little wild, you know. I mean, as far oh, as uh, about there, there, was, there, there was there was reasons for letting him right. go. It wasn't right. like, oh, hey, we're just gonna let you go because the show's coming out. It was like, bro, it's a weird work environment. People are kind of freaking out. People are kind of bothered. I'm right. sorry. I didn't know. I didn't hear the story. What What was he doing on OnlyFans? <laughs> Can you say? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what, what, what do you do on OnlyFans <laughs> on the regulars? You know, <laughs> well, 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 our, our OnlyFans we show we we do, we show our. Um, color, there was a lot of feet. Uh, you know, it was uh, things in Matt's mouth like uh, uh, cheesy puffs and stuff. <laughs> yes, things in Matt's is... mouth on OnlyFans is not <laughs> yeah, like, like uh, uh, body color, male model. Um, he is uh, obviously, you know, um, things that matter and things that don't. But um, but yes, he yeah. has a very popular OnlyFans page, yeah. and um, I heard was... that Disney didn't have a problem with that. Well, no, they didn't have a problem with it until they had a problem with it. Until the wow. workplace side, until human resources came in and said, <laughs> "Hey, guess what? There's some stuff floating around the computers in the office of the entire team and things like that." And they're like, you know, this kind of leaves us exposed. And it, it, and at that time, that was that. From gotcha. what I've heard, yeah, that was the decision. Obviously, yeah. I don't work at Disney. I don't know everything. <laughs> People but, stop doing freaky stuff. But, but, but a lot of people don't know any of that, right? They're just like, they fired the man that made this, you know, and they, they don't really know like, oh, well, you know, I, I've, I've, I know a lot of people that were really good at their jobs, but they were fucking creeps, you know, <laughs> it was kind of like, eh, you yeah. gotta kind of take a number and be like, what's the line? Well, let me, let me ask you this. Okay. So, because there was a petition now going around to bring Bo back because mm -hmm. of how good the, you set up one and two. Um, do you think because James Gunn had that issue with his pre with his like old tweets, right? Yeah. From his trauma days, and Disney brought him back. Do you could you see Disney bringing Bo back? No, no. And, okay. and I say that because they they learned that lesson, and that's what because that's what happened with James. That's what happened with um uh what's his name Jack Sparrow Johnny Depp, mm -hmm. you know, and and that was the exact reason why they held on to Kang uh for so long, didn't overreact, waited until things were guilty, waited until they had mm -hmm. enough, they had enough things to say like you know what we jumped the gun twice already, we and and, and we lost, we got James back, but that was kind of an fu. And you know, and we would right. and, and Johnny's not coming back, and because of that, we have to reboot the entire Pirates of the Caribbean storyline, 
you know, because he said, I am never working for Disney again. Whoops, I left that up too long. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> but so, you know, it's like it's like doing my thumbs up. But, you know, uh, eventually uh, all oh, those yeah, things, yeah, cool. I do it, it only works for Macs. If you've got a Mac and you're on the new version, it works. Okay. If you've got a Mac. If you don't have a Mac, it doesn't do it. Nope. But at any rate. Yeah, Mac. I don't see it. I don't see it happening. I, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think they're gonna bring Bo back. Um, I. I think he's definitely a cool dude, but I think that something happened on the back end that made yeah. people, in one way, shape, or form, uncomfortable, and a decision had to get made in that way. Sure. It wasn't like Disney just woke up one day and was like, "No, you know." It was. Right. Oh crap. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well. Yeah, I want to give go. a shout out to uh, the Nearing Nirvana team that's here. At least half of them. We got She Geek and we got Lucy. We hey. Got, uh, hey. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, Mama. Yeah. We should probably get to, uh, we're uh, in terms of just to fit in the most important scene of, of X-Men and talk about it. Do you it. know how many times I've rewatched this? I, I, mean, uh, no. I mean, I mean, I, I, <laughs> probably into the 30s uh you know like i and and i watched so many reaction videos just because like there was this one girl who was just crying for like like 10 minutes <laughs> and, and it's so sad but so funny but so sad and she was even laughing at herself while tr also crying mm -hmm. you know it's it's so silly to like get attached to a character um, especially when he was finally like given his due. Like, I mean, at this moment, everyone was just like just shocked, right? Yeah. Um, and then those of us who have seen him do these big charges in the comics kind of knew this was coming a little bit, but you didn't know no. Um, and the fact that he did it was pretty um well what what did we jump into the it just jumped to the other episode it was just giving highlights and little oh, oh okay yeah. it was so the fact that he tied you know the name's gambit remember it to his old line from the original series is was I mean, so good yeah so so good so well done <sighs> yeah but like it, everyone it, starts bawling at the like i can't feel you that's oh. where it hit me it was it, that's where it hit me is like sugar i i I can't feel you anymore. And that was when I, 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 I got on the phone with like eight people. I got I got into a group chat. I was just like, what? What's <laughs> that? You know, it was just and 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 honestly, it it uh, that that definitely pulled at my heartstrings. That definitely pulled at my heartstrings. It, it was a tough week for for cartoons because I don't know mm -hmm. if any of you have kids and watch Bluey, but it was an also a very tough episode of Bluey. Uh, That's what I heard. What happened with Bluey? Uh, and so we watched it last night because we don't have young kids. Our kids are like uh, tweens now. I thought you were like but, going back to Invincible ending or something like that. No, no, <laughs> no Bluey, the kids' cartoon. So I, I don't know if you've ever watched it, but you get you you do get it is a good show. It is well yeah. written. So Bluey, we're man, we're really digressing here. But Bluey was um, his dad got a new job, right? And it was and they had to sell the house and and the kids didn't understand and they were moving out of the house and the the kids were all excited and they're like okay say goodbye to the house and the kids are like wait what like the whole show is around them you know running around all the rooms and every every room has like magic and you know and they had to say goodbye to the house and they were just they didn't understand until that moment that that was the last time they were going to be there and then the dad at the right when they're going to leave the dad at the end got um a call saying that the buyer pulled out and he just said, you know, ripped the sign out of the ground dramatically, threw it into the street, and they all hugged and went back into the house and had a little picnic in an empty house. And they were like, you're just like, God dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Bluey is making adults cry. Liam is okay. making adults cry. So Bluey does, uh, from what I've heard, though, it does deal with some very adult things, yeah. that, like some it very does. big things for kids. It actually deals with a lot of stuff. So. We, you know. we but it's all animation. The like animation is making us bald, like the past two weeks. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, but we turned it on for the first time because we have a cat and we put on cat TV and stuff. And someone was like, "Oh, the high pitched sounds of Bluey." People, so the cat sat there and watched it. We couldn't turn it off for like three or four episodes back to back. We're like, "Okay, it's pretty good. It's pretty good." So it's it's yeah. very captivating for sure. And captivating or captivating? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kind of looking yeah. for that little. Oh, by the way, today's National Cat Lady Day. I don't know if you guys know that. Oh. I just, 
oh. my wife just told me that. So I know Matt and uh, and Bobby like to put out like the, the when it's a special day or something, a comic related to it. What comic would go with? I was thinking Catwoman, but National Cat Lady Day. Oh uh, yeah, you would black do cat. cat. Catwoman's black cat. Oh, well, speaking of man, we're really digressing. Did, did you hear the rumors that? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. What's your name? <laughs> so, so, well, she's not coming back from Madam Web. So, what no, are you worried about? Back from Madam Web. <laughs> but that was everyone was like, she's um, so Sydney Sweeney is rumored to be uh, cat to be Black Cat in the next Spider Man film. Four. And you know, it's iconic. Like that's what everyone was hoping that she would be. Like yeah, there right. was some producer that watched her in whatever her lo- uh, her latest rom com. And he, he's like, she's not pretty, and she can't act. Oh Her man, life. I, I, I what saw that. What do you live on? <laughs> <laughs> obviously, never seen Euphoria at all. Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah, right. 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 no, right. Sydney's Sydney's amazing, and I mean, yeah, she could be great. Black Cat. Very easily, she is Felicia Hardy to a T, hundred yeah. percent. Oh, she yeah. can easily pull off that character. And you see her with like Tom, uh, with um, Tom, um, like Colin. she would just—you could already feel like she's way more, uh, you know, way outdoes him in terms yeah. of like magnetism, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that you know. And if you guys don't know, so Sony and you know the whole thing with the Sony verse, I used to work there for a very a long time and worked on a lot of that stuff. Um, Sony is, is they could do whatever they want with their own films, but with Spider Man co MCU films, Marvel's in charge and Sony's along for the ride. Um, so that's why that stuff is so different in quality because um, there's different people um, running running the show. It's and, still and, there's a lot of cooks in the Spider-Man kitchen all the time, um, but Marvel and, also has complete control though of the television cartoon Sony yes. yeah. universe though, especially which is yeah. why I, a lot of people now are interested in hearing about a spectacular Spider-Man continuation after the X-Men '97 success is rebooting the Sony verse spectacular spider-man series and bringing that continuation back to that'd be cool Disney that'd be Plus. nice I've, I've been hearing a lot about that i'm also Can you imagine a, 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 a superior spider-man uh like going into Arc. all that that was that was probably one of the mo- more effed up spider-man books i've ever read yeah it absolutely was yeah. in my opinion yeah but what do you guys think about this <laughs> send you a link laura I think Matt so, needs to really go back to Sony and talk to people because <laughs> you know, well, I believe me, I, I tried so many times, <laughs> so many times. And, so, and the creative exec that actually re- oversees this, like we had a meeting. He's like, look, I have no idea who these characters are. I have, I've never, I've never read a comic. I've never been in like a, a Spider-Man fan and he's the one running this thing. So it's kind of, uh, you know, so, that's why. So two <laughs> things. Um, yeah. I do know that the original showrunner of Spider-Man 97 has said that he is very interested in finishing Spider-Man 97 because we never got a true finish. It just sure. ended. Sam Raimi? You mean the movies or the car- oh, 97, like the cartoon? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh. I, I thought you were talking about the, the, Ra- the Raimi movies. I know there's been rumors about that too. but Yeah. No, uh, Sam, is it Kep- Kepner? Yeah. Uh, he- I, I love how Peter Parker always rocked a polo shirt and like yeah. whitewashed jeans. That yes. was like Peter Parker's day to day outfit was like tennis and jeans and a yeah. polo shirt. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm very interested right now in Sony's possible with backing from Apollo buying of Paramount, what I've yeah. heard very recently. Was what? That kind of scares me because like some of my favorite franchises are are sony and that's sony excuse me are paramount and that's like yeah. star trek <laughs> that's things yeah. like i am right. a trekker i am i'm sorry like a lot of people give me shit for i love star wars and star trek equally um yeah. i'm i'm one of those guys but it and that gave me pause because i've seen what's happened with the spider side of things lately at sony anything that's not miles related <laughs> out of the sony well, animation. so to, to explain things a little bit and how it works so everything's its own division Columbia Pictures has the rights to do all the Spider-Man um, related films. Mm-hmm. They yeah. also have the rights to do a TV show, which they're, you know, that's still in development. 
but the TV side, it's like their own wheelhouse. The animated um, world, they're their own thing. Literally, Sorry, they yeah. told Columbia, hands off Miles, hands off Spider Gwen. That was Thank what God. six years yeah. ago. Um, and that was the agreement that they had was you don't touch these characters. I'm sure, you know, once you watch the money that uh, goes, goes out the window, but the TV side of things, they've given us the in invincible. They've given us the boys. They've given us like, they're doing, they're the only ones doing, um, TV superheroes, right? So yep. the TV side of things is doing a fantastic job, you know? Um, so that Wasn't team that a is, web supposed to be for TV though. Uh, no, no, they, they've been, it was originally two different films. I read oh, the okay. script for what was originally the silver sable, uh, black cat. Um, and who was the third character? There's three of them. Um, wasn't Jack, was it? Black, J no, it wasn't Jack, it was silver saber, black cat. Maybe it was just the two of them. But I think that's what it was called, Silver Saber and Black Cat. And it was like this espionage type, like uh, Charlie's Angels film. Mm -hmm. um, the script was terrible, so that yeah. fell out the window. Then it turned into a, an Olivia, um, who's the director? Of Olivia Munn. 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 Olivia Munn, thank you. Mm -hmm. She was supposed to do a Spider a Spider Woman film, a dedicated Spider Woman I film. I hearing that. Yeah. And then that fell, that fell out, and then, and then it kind of morphed into Madam Web um and that was kind of what you ended with and and mm -hmm. you know, so that was kind of the history of, of, of the spider stuff yeah. so the second thing i was gonna say is uh my writing partner his buddy edited the craven trailer mm. yeah we've seen craven right. <laughs> he, just, he just said it's trash no it no absolute madam web garbage no. Well, it, it's it's again they're turning into like they're turning all these villains into antiheroes, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not everyone can be an antihero. So that so is my. Why does Craven thing? deserve to be one for once? Like like why? Did you yeah. did you hear? Um, so sinister. Speak just doing a flash or callback. Uh, he actually loved uh, Craven, the hunter, and I think he worked with him in a Spider-Man crossover thing. And he, they were hunting like X-Men and, and Spider-Man. But he actually took some, he cloned uh, Craven and made this ultimate kind of like uh, mutant, uh, yeah. that was like a hunting guy. I forgot what he was called, but yeah. So Sinister likes Craven as well. And there's your tie-in. Yeah, not sure. Real quick, real quick. Um, we have about five more minutes, and we need everybody to enter if you guys want to win this giveaway. Um, right uh in the comments hashtag gimme and uh who will choose a winner at the end of this yep and while while we have people entering can we play that that uh that death of gambit um <laughs> yeah that death of gambit reaction and, video and I, like, I i got a feeling it's going to be though like for two to three more weeks you know because it, it, right. cable was there he's gonna be back this isn't you know this is this isn't permanent you know they they wrote xavier out of episode one you know it all of a sudden now he's back again too so i i love so this matt, reaction video matt this was loves my reaction one. videos i love reaction i've been videos. hearing about this all day so yeah. I, haven't, I haven't even watched this yet so well I, I feel these guys yo he's strong as fuck. it's godzilla for real oh stay hidden y'all stay hidden magneto he promised to leech. And what's his channel, John? Again. I forget what it is. Fuck. The oh, are no friends to the Morlocks. Oh no! Oh no! Oh <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh my fucking god! Best episode ever. Yes. You heard the music? Yes. Hey, jump to uh, fourteen uh, thirty, John. Here we go. <laughs> You gotta be fucking kidding me, yo! What am I watching right now? <laughs> there we go. Let's go, baby. Let's. That's your man. I, I understand now. <laughs> Everyone's like, he's got it. He's nope. Mutant <laughs> neutralize. <laughs> look, look at the concern. My name's Gambit. On a me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Listen, Gambit is stronger than you fucking think, bitch. <laughs> Remember it. I remember just like what just happened. What am I watching? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> for those just returning to us, regardless of your stance on recent world events. Oh my! 
The images you are about to see may be disturbing. His hands don't move his head for like... I, I can't feel you. <laughs> you can, <it's>, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just silence. He just lays down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love these guys because that's how everyone was feeling. It was like, yeah, yeah. I, I had to call by. I had to call a support group. I needed a circle of friends. The to other guy, up. like if you let him yeah. play, and he's like, "What did we just watch?" Yeah, <laughs> and, and and the best thing about this being a weekly series, though, too, is that you could go yeah. through it with everybody. Like I, I am a yeah. part of. I, I do kind of love it when everything comes out at once because sometimes I hate like having to wait the week in between. But it was cathartic. Yeah, going right. through it with the right. whole fucking internet you know there was like because it didn't matter where you went if you were on twitter threads instagram youtube facebook anything anywhere i went it was just it, it was like it was like a remembrance you know everybody was everybody was mourning and everything was just like no spoilers but what the fuck, marvel <laughs> you know it was just like what happened uh, it was uh, it was great at the beginning of episode six, were you waiting to see if he was going to appear in the intro? No. Yeah. Oh, I skipped the intro. You see, oh, you no. did? No, you they cut him it. out and they replaced him with, with Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Yeah. And it is tough too to finally get Nightcrawler, finally get Nightcrawler in there. And it's like, and, when Gambit's toast. And they you know? finally get him right too. This like a yeah. little elf guy who's like, you know, his stature was perfect. Like I, the animation, I love how they're, they pay homage to the, uh, like the old school 97, but they're yeah. making it more relevant. Like, the the energy blasts and stuff look yeah. really tight. So yeah. if you so actually I'm I'm glad you brought that up, uh, John, because uh, the Nightcrawler logo was actually his '80s miniseries, same font and everything. It was like the 1980s so bad. Oh wow! When when episode five dropped, I was heading up to Austin for family stuff, which John and Matt know about, and the episode ends, and my wife just goes. Should you have watched this episode? I'm like, probably not. No. <laughs> I had oh, to. Yes, that was bad timing for you, for sure. <laughs> so, but but it was funny because I was I was more in shock because I saw so with when I saw Cable, I'm like, okay, whatever happens, MacGuffin, there you go. But they have said that this episode five isn't even the gut punch of the season. They said wait till episode eight. Yeah. Well, well that's okay. okay. Right. So two more. Yeah, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. If if that's not the gut punch, what is happening? The rumor is follow the mutants. You you, you know what I what I appreciate the most about this show is that the original series um, was so Wolverine focused, so yeah. much so that every X Men epi- series after that was like Wolverine and the X Men. Yeah. Like they was like because they realized Wolverine was. You, there's very little Wolverine in this series so far. Very little. Uh, you, in fact, you've seen him. You haven't. You've barely seen him in action. I still don't uh, know why he didn't explode when Gambit charged. Uh, Gambit charged him up. Well, it's the same reason why Gambit's staff doesn't explode every single time. Oh, because that's Adam right? too. Because yeah, he, can, he can put different kinds of kinetic energy into things. Tr- kinetic energy that's transferable <laughs> and kinetic energy that explodes. Yeah. Right. So. A lot of people, like everybody, was freaking out about, like, well, why doesn't Logan just explode? You know, but it was, it, it was ex- exactly what you see in the difference between his cards and his bow staff, right? He charges that bow staff all the time, and he's always got the same damn thing with him. Is yeah. he doesn't have extras? He just keeps on pulling out, you know. So that's that that's that's kind of what I always related to, and everybody's just like, oh, oh yeah, that's true. He's always got that damn staff. So yeah, yeah so I guess he can't charge up uh, Cap Shield. Uh, she said, uh, Mephisto's finally going to show up. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, Mephisto and Omega Red, and who else has been rumored for like, oh, uh, uh, Darkhawk and Nova, and yeah, I am, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't need any of that horse. Group. Don't get me, don't, don't do that to me, don't do that to me. She, um, I can't, yeah. I can't handle those guys again. I went through that too much with WandaVision. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> WandaVision and then Omega Red showing up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and it was like, and then Omega showing up in in uh, Doctor Strange was a rumor. Like, 
Um, I don't. Do you remember the the poster for? I think they did it for Doctor Strange and for Spider Man um, No Way Home, where it was like every single character was in the poster. It was like Godzilla and <laughs> Superman. It was like every. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it got to a point where it was like Doctor Strange, uh, Multiverse of Madness was out of control. With well, people, you know. And if that if everybody thought that was out of control, Deadpool and Wolverine's about to yeah. blow that out of the water. I well, got a feeling yeah, that's yeah. gonna be the cameo of cameo films yeah. to ever be made. Okay, so Taylor Swift, yes or no for Deadpool three? Yes. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. I mean she's 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 connected to Ryan Reynolds. She's like right uh is yep. She best friends with Blake Lively. Yeah, Tom, Shane Levy was at the Chiefs game with her and and uh, Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. It's like okay, I I, I, I personally close. personally I think I think she's not going to be like a dazzler. I think she's going to be a variant in there, and she's just going to be Taylor Swift. Um, and she's not going to be like, like they thought I was, I thought I had these powers. I think I can do these things. I'm, I'm just a singer. And I feel like it's just going to be Taylor Swift. It's going to be a joke. I've got a feeling yeah. Taylor Swift is in Deadpool three. I don't think it's Dazzler. I think Taylor Swift is in it. Well, that's the other my, rumor is, my opinion. is, so she's also a big Deadpool fan. So she borrowed Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, uh, Deadpool costume for yeah. Halloween one year. And so she's a big Deadpool fan. So the fact, you know, there's also a thought that she could be Lady Deadpool. I think and we're all thought, getting Ralph Bonard. I think I we're know. all getting Ralph Bonard yeah. again. Right. That's what right. I think it is. Well, look, look what James says here. Like the last word on her new album, which I guess dropped today, because again, yeah. it's cat day or whatever. And I guess she likes that. Market is blowing up again. Um, the last word she, she said was dazzling. So yeah, yeah. there you go. There you go. Yeah. On the on that note, I know we're at the uh, six thirty mark here, but let me uh, let me let's select the uh, person. Uh, so if you haven't already, t type in hashtag gimme to get entered, and we are about to roll. Let's see. Give me a sec. All right. All right. Well, there's only 17 people watching, so like you have a one in 17 chance to win this right now. So. <laughs> pretty good, guys. It's pretty good. But show up every week and you get a hundred dollar uh, book for free. So. <laughs> All right. Hashtag gimme. Come on. Uh, we'll wait 10 seconds. Uh, I see uh, Jonathan just put it in there. Hashtag gimme. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Here we go. Uh, 11. Okay. James, James Craig got two in there. Well, no, it, it only counts. It only does it once, though. Yeah, nice but, try yeah. there, James. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, just in case. So if, if whoever does win, um, reach out to us on our Instagram with your Instagram. We'll take a screenshot of your name. Um, and that's the only way for we, us to really verify that it's you. Uh, but reach out to us and we will get that shipped out to you. All right, here we go. Brrr. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Mario won the set there. Congrats, Mario. Yeah, Good congrats, job. Mario. Matt, Matt will Mario. mail it out to you soon, Mario. <laughs> I know. I'll mail, I'll mail it out to you, Mario. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get your information. All right. Well, uh, one true nerd king, thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, chatting, thanks, Phil. Uh, yeah. With everything and for the balloons. For the balloons. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Nice. It's just uh, you, these are these are the things I like to do. I just like to do stuff like this, and make it do that. <laughs> And then you can do oh, this, nope. and I'll get the dazzler rock and roll yeah. kind of thing going. And yeah. well, I have Matt. That's, uh, That's pretty just, cool. So, so be sure to sign uh, if you guys want. You know, go to his uh, Instagram and YouTube channel. He's doing a lot of cool stuff. Some, over there, so one some people would say it's the helmet and crayons, but I am special. So you know, <laughs> and, and, um, and one junior king is the king of uh, memes. So if you want some good memes on a daily basis, you know that's that's where you go. Where I go for my I, daily I dose. appreciate it. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Obviously, thank you for letting me yeah. hang out. It was good seeing you, comic book women in the chat, as well as yeah. you know, Steve, yeah, nice you old dog James, Tony. Uh, is there is there a nearing Nirvana show we should send people to uh, next, guys? Is there one at seven? If you guys are still there. So, if so nearing, yeah. Uh, it's, the, it's the lag, the lag of chat delay that you just yeah, kind of have to kind of There is a, a chat delay. It, 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 here, let's like go to, well, mm, let's, mm. let's drop the link in. Oh, not tonight. Mm. Okay, not tonight. Okay. okay. Well, go there anyways. anyways. Go there and watch the last episode if you didn't see it. Who cares? Right. Yeah. Also, uh, right. Well, they did have a really fun show on Tuesday of like of controversial covers. 
which is my I, that's my Ooh. jam. And uh, man, does it, we'll, we'll just we're not allowed to talk about it, but we'll just talk about it really quick. We'll just show it. Real, we were no one said we couldn't show it, but okay. this, this drama, this drama. If you you know if you want to hear more, hopefully if maybe you know you know. But yeah, yeah this is uh, episode. It's a little, little, a little tease on a, on a, on a destroying spawn three fifty. Yeah, it happens, people. People, people destroy things. It does happen. So, and, uh, a thank you to Bobby for joining this one. Thank you, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. So, everyone, have a wonderful weekend and uh, keep on collecting and all that fun stuff. See you guys. Bye, guys. Bye.